It's been a long time since I posted a video, but I figured it was a good time to start again. Uh, so I have nine hives now. Um, things have changed since my last video. Uh, live on an old farm and have about 50 acres of land um, with a giant meadow. It's about, the, the meadow itself is about 25 acres. It's a lot of wildflowers. Um, got a couple old barns. Uh, but anyways, nine hives. Started with two alive in the spring when I moved here two years ago and I've been splitting, splitting, splitting. And at the moment I'm up to nine. Uh, however, one of them is queenless and I've decided uh, after attempting to requeen once, decided I've had enough. Um, so I'm using the resources from that hive for a couple of the splits. Um, in fact, these, these two right here just got their second boxes today. These two little hives right here. The third box that you see there is just uh, an empty box. It's sitting above a feeder board because I have some in, an in-high feeder in, in each of those. Um, and this, this hive over here is three full boxes and doing well. It's packed. That upper box is uh, packed full of honey. Just a reminder, I run only eight frame mediums for everything. Brood chambers, honey supers, um, pretty much everything. I have started building a lot of my own equipment. Um, these bottom boards here are all homemade and home built. Um, along with that bee box there, uh, that actually, I think I just finished building yesterday. It's old, it's old barn wood, just rough cut old barn wood that I have laying around, which I seem to have a lot of. Um, most of my bottom boards are screened. Uh, all the ones I build from scratch, I, I screen with a eight inch hardware cloth across the bottom. Here's another example of a homemade box. Season's going good. So we're in uh, third week of July, roughly, and the bees are packing the honey away. Uh, I just finished labeling my hives. This, this is a trick I actually found uh, on YouTube from another beekeeper who was using cattle tags to lab, uh, label his hives. And I've been trying to figure out a good system for taking notes out here in the apiary and getting them back into the house and into some kind of form where I could uh, review them and, um, when I do an inspection or go through my hives, I like to, I like to take note of a bunch of different things. Um, one, the weather, weather conditions at the hive, uh, or you know, out in the apiary, uh, sunny, windy, temperature roughly, the temperament of the bees at each hive. Um, and lately, I'll say these bees have been extremely calm. Um, I can go through hives probably without a suit and wouldn't get stung. Although I never do that, I always wear a suit because you never know. Um, and then, uh, you know, I take the, the basic inspection notes, you know, amount of brood, honey stores, uh, you know, the usual from there on for each hive. And I also like to just make a little note of what I think I should do next time I'm in the apiary with each hive. You know, oh, this one needs a pollen patty, this one needs some feed, it needs, it's gonna need more room. Um, so I, I like to do that for each and every hive. And um, I was using uh, just an app um, built into the iPhone here. I think it's called Notes and dictating to it and that was working pretty well but i couldn't keep track of which hive i was talking about so back to the cattle tags i bought these on amazon for like i don't know it was like 10 15 bucks for 100 of them and i just screwed them on to each bottom board um i decided not to put them on the bottom brood box which is what the i believe the other beekeeper whose you know idea i stole here did he put his on um uh what are they called you know they're the hooks that you thread into the box um just a basic you know a piece of basic like c hook metal with threads on the end that you would screw into a box um, the nice thing about his approach is that you could flip take the tags off and, and swap them um, and i think that makes sense if you if you're going to put them on the bottom box uh, since i'm not doing that and i'm putting them right on the bottom board um, i think you know i can leave them and I, I have a couple other bottom boards that are partially built not complete yet because you know i don't really need them quite yet um, and I can stick tags on those as well because I have like 200 of these things now. So I just drove them in quick with the, that's why the drill's out here. I just drove them in quick with a, uh, you know, s small screw and, uh, you know, that's it. So I got hive number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And over here, this one's labeled number four. This is the one that's queenless. Uh, I pulled eight frames of resources from it today. There's a lot of drones flying around the sky. Um, no brood though, no brood in the hive at all. No drone, no drone brood. Oh my gosh, look at that. That poor girl is stuck. That's my fault. Probably earlier when I was working the hive. Let's see if I can get her out of there. Hopefully she survives. 
I don't know if I can lift this box by hand enough to, for her to crawl out of there. She's really struggling. I gave her some space. Let's see if I can help her out with the camera here. Come on. She's trying to crawl out into my phone here. There we go. Yeah, I got her out. Another one came up behind her. Um, I hate to kill. I hate to see honeybees die. You know, it's, I don't know. It's just part of doing inspections. You know, I thought that one was coming at me, but she didn't. I don't have gloves on. And, um, you know, if I'm wearing in a hive work and I, I typically use gloves, um, I just try to stay as tactile as possible and, and make sure I'm not squishing any bees. Um, of course, you know, it's inevitable. I always end up killing a couple workers here and there, but um, such is life, right? Um, anyway, so this is my apiary now. I got the three here. These are our three new splits for this year. These two are new splits. Um, the two on the outside here, so the far, the far left there, and then this one over here, the far right, those are the hives that I originally brought with me when we moved here two years ago. And then I created the two inner hives here from them last year. They did really well, built up pretty quick. Um, didn't pull any honey from them. Setting the, uh, making the splits did set the, uh, the original hives back pretty far. Last year was also very dry. Uh, the honey crop up here was pretty poor. Um, I ended up feeding quite a bit into the fall. Putting candy boards on. So I went into the winter with these four hives. As you can see, this is west. This is where the weather comes from. Wide open field, and it is brutally windy here in the wintertime. We had winds of 60 miles an hour. In fact, this hive here got knocked completely over. It was ratchet strapped together, but the whole thing went, went over in a windstorm. Uh, of course, the power was out, you know, during that storm as well. It was pretty wild. Um, I came out here, it was probably 40 degrees, and picked the hive back up and set it back up on the, uh, using the ratchet strap sort of as a winch, <laughs> set the thing back up on the stand. And it survived. All four hives survived the winter. And I didn't wrap them. I didn't really do anything to prepare them for winter with the exception of quilt boxes. I'm a big believer in quilt boxes. Keep the moisture out of the hive. I'm a big believer in the eight frame, eight frame mediums. It creates more of a chimney effect. The heat rises, the humidity rises, goes up into the quilt box. The quilt box has holes on it so the wood chips up there can dry. Um, and then lastly, um, no wraps or anything around the hives, just candy boards on, at the top and, you know, in case the bees run out of resources. And none of them did. Long winter up here, but uh, they picked up the candy boards, but they all, they all had quite a bit of honey left in them in the spring. So. so four out of four survived. I was real happy about that. This year I'm going to go for eight out of eight. Obviously the one isn't going isn't gonna to make it because she's queenless. So I'm slowly going to dismantle her and, and use her resources. I did think about just trying to combine it with one of the other hives, but... Um, I don't know, I decided against doing that. I'll just pull the resources slowly as the population on the hive dwindles by nature anyways, which it will. So I think that's it for this time. Um, hope to see you guys all again a little bit more often here. Um, I'll try to record videos a little more often and, and share what's going on here out in my apiary. See you later.